Back in September of 2023, we were heading as a team uh, back to Rio Grande Valley, Texas, which is a part of the country that is notoriously underfunded for animal care. Sandy was at the West Laco shelter where there is an 8,000 intake with fewer than 15 staff. We know that the people there just have hearts of gold and we love going to that community just to really see how we can help. Every once in a while, we come across these dogs that just really pull at your heartstrings. And when I arrived to Westlaco Shelter, you could see that Sandy was a really, really sad and just kind of shut down dog. She was laying in her kennel, um, not really overly excited or moving around. But then when you started to walk towards her kennel and talk to her, you could just see her tail start wagging and her hope come back. She just lit up. And I instantly knew this is a dog who is really resilient uh, and just wants nothing more than to trust people and for people to love her. We took Sandy out of her kennel and her first stop on her very long journey was a bath at the shelter. She was very, very dirty, had some fleas and ticks on her that we had to get off. And uh, just even after having a bath, she was just a different dog. She uh, got excited again. You could tell she felt better and the bath just worked wonders. And from there, Rory on our team took her back to the hotel as his sleepover buddy for the trip. And we decided to have her go with Rory um, from Rio Grande Valley up to Austin, where his family is. We traveled by car four hours to Austin, Texas, where she stayed with me and my family there, and then flew in an airplane with me to Phoenix, Arizona, stayed in my apartment there. I reached out to a friend of mine, Anne, who had recently lost her beagle um, after uh, having them for a very long time, and they weren't sure if they were ready for another dog, but just in case they were, I did send them a picture of Sandy and a little bit about her. And that was really when uh, my friend Anne decided that Sandy was the one for them. Once she saw all these videos, how she was with everybody, how she is in the car, uh, it was really hard to say no to. So after staying with Rory for a few days, Sandy then went over to Maria's house, who is another colleague of ours at PetSmart Charities who fostered her and again fell in love with her. I think every person who met Sandy or fostered Sandy over this journey uh, offered to adopt her if, if something fell through. We decided that because I was already going out to Philadelphia for a conference, uh, it was the easiest for me to bring Sandy with me and to coordinate a handoff to her new family uh, in Maryland, since it's pretty close. My name is Heidi Marston. I'm the Director of Pet Placement Initiatives with PetSmart Charities. My name is Rory Adams. I'm the Senior Manager of Adoption Initiatives for PetSmart Charities. Sandy's journey highlights the power of asking for help and working together. She also reminds me of just how important it is for us to slow down and care about the lives of each individual animal that enter into our shelter system. Sandy's journey sounds really big and, and long and like a, a lot of work, but I think the point of this and what we should all take away from this is that helping animals doesn't just mean adopting. Uh, it means you could foster a pet for a few days um, while you're visiting a new town. It means you could have a sleepover or a day trip with a pet uh, to give them a break from the shelter so we can learn more about them. And we really just wanna encourage folks to be creative, reach out to your local organizations and ask how you can help because we all have a role to play no matter how big or small. And um, because of all this and the little actions of many, many people, Sandy is living her best life and has found her family. So certainly a happy ending for everybody involved.